Hey Monster Hobbies Mechanics, how's it going today? So I was looking through my old footage on my computer and I actually found something really cool. It's a diorama that I started to work on in 2020. And I wanted to finish this video and make it one big nice thing with a big demo and all the rest. But uh, I'm not quite there yet. However, I do believe that I could just turn this into part one, and I'm unsure when part two is going to be happening. But now that I've got a little more time and whatever to work on things, I think I will show you guys part one of this video. So without further ado, let's check out this amazing diorama that I was working on back in 2020, and let's just hope that I can get this thing done in the future. Well, let's go down to the bench and see what I was working on. Here we have a concept idea from the 2020 Model Railroader Best of Scenery magazine, which came out earlier this year. This layout is from Paul Dokos, one of his ideas. It says, Paul added trees, manhole covers, pavement markings, and other details on Eaton Street, which is part of his model railroad layout. However, this could also make a very interesting shelf display, where you could display the Coca-Cola trucks like we're going to do. And here you've got your street, your sidewalk, and then the buildings in the back. And it says there's an etched metal manhole cover here, a white painted line for stopping, the etched metal sewer grate, and a tree planting area outside of the sidewalk. So all of these little nice details here could make for a very interesting shelf display scene. Here's a cool building concept for our stores. If we're going for a storefront look on our shelf display, it says this grocery store looks occupied thanks to window signs and several fruit and vegetable crates resting inside the windows. So we could do something similar with all those Coca-Cola th products. This here comes from the Model Railroader Building a Ready-to-Run Model Railroad magazine, a book from Camelback Publishing. And then if we look in here, this is the front of the building from the inside. It says the crates are simply glued to styrene shelves, which are glued to the front walls just below the window bottoms. So that's how they've done it there. And on the previous page here, we see how they've put a light inside the top of the building so it will shine down onto all those cool products inside, as well as they put this black cardboard strip in here just to blank out any extra light from going anywhere that you don't want the light to be. So before we begin our actual shelf display we needed to measure our shelf and our shelving unit. So what I have here is the uh, length of the shelf is 23 and a quarter inches, the depth of it is 11 and a half inches, and my inner height is 8 inches before I'm hitting the next shelf. So I've got this all laid out, and I've actually cut styrofoam and gone a little bit uh, shorter. So we'll take a look at that in a minute here. Now one of the concepts that I had for our shelf display, since these are Coca-Cola trucks that are going to go in here, was to build my shelf like this. I know sometimes it can look upside down or confusing. Even when I look at this, it looks upside down at times. Anyway, what we have here is the outer wall going here, and then there would be a sunken indoor frame going along this side. There's our bottom styrofoam sheet, this inner wall, and the back wall. And now what I've done is I've marked this out here, like bricks, except it would be a wallpaper border pattern along there with this alternating checkerboard, a red and white. Then our tiles here on the floor would be again red and white squares. Then somewhere in here we would have a wall clock with a calendar, which was typical of the 1950s. There'd be a Coke vending machine in here, desks with chairs, sort of in this area close by the door. Because this here would be a, the concept is a Coca-Cola service truck dealer showroom. So that would be for the three model trucks we have there. Now I made up the uh, shelf here with our styrofoam. I had some sheets. This is half inch styrofoam, half inch thickness. So I just have it, if we go around here, I just green taped it along there with some green masking tape just to hold everything in place. Because if I'm going to do this, I need to take these walls off and paint them and, you know, wallpaper them, whatever I'm doing. This is the concept that I had with some of my older 53 Fords. This is the 
MPC flip nose version. And these two, of course, are AMT kits, our favorites. <laughs> so you would sort of see how these trucks would be aligned. And then there would be that door in here somewhere. And then like a little area, a desk or something with a spot as a showroom. So that our figures, 125th scale, could be looking at these different trucks. And then, of course, when the customer comes in the hobby shop and wants to buy that Ford, he can see what they all look like. And, of course, this one would be like the on the side of the box, there's that white Ford truck with the red lettering. And then this one would be, a you know, sort of like the red one or whatever and something different here. I'd also have one as stock, custom drag race or maybe a service truck one or something like that right just so you get the concept of what's going on however i do like that um the street scene from the model railroader i just i'm not on a tripod here as you can tell but basically i could even have two trucks in here or something but there you could have the truck and here uh, this is an off cut very thin could be the curb you know just cut a longer length of that and then I can have some storefronts basically not quite to the back but just a little bit ahead coming up just so it gives it a little more of a 3d relief coming out and have a street scene in there um, of course this would be the curb so the sidewalk would come out on top of the curb to about here somewhere you know, that kind of thing. And then I can put in figures. The uh, figures that Kip 3D printed for me, which we'll take a look at in a minute here, which of course are people from the 30s and 40s walking around. So pretty cool ideas we can have with our shelf display. I could even do that, uh, the Coca-Cola truck showroom thing as uh, make another one of these and then have these alternate or whatever. Or these don't even have to be Coke trucks. They could be other model cars that we have in the store for sale. Just use this frontal area as a display and the back can always be the same. The uh, downtown city buildings. So here we've got that little piece that I cut off that uh, I was thinking of using for a curb. And I think it's about the right height for a real curb. Because if you look, you know, you're just a little... You're almost scraping the rim, which is basically <laughs> the way those curbs are in the rim of your tires, right? So if this is back here, of course, you know, it should be about looking about right. So in order to get this again, I'm going to use a little trick. This, of course, is one of those adjustable compasses that you get in your drafting sets or school sets made by Step. Statler, I guess. Anyway, so you just wind this down and figure out what your height is. And then on your spare scraps of styrofoam board, you would just make a mark along there, right? And then get your ruler out and your knife and chop along there. And then do the next one and the next one because if I'm going to be doing this sidewalk, unfortunately I can't cut it down with the knife this way and have a nice wide piece. I'm only going to have these little half inch sections. <laughs> so, I don't know, maybe there's a better way to do this. Maybe with some of that other board stuff. Because I would have to go all the way to the back. Maybe I'll see if I've got some foam cord board and use that instead. But still, it would be nice to have some of this as a facing, just because you can get a nice smooth cut, whereas a foam core board is going to have like little cardboard, a little bit of filler, a little cardboard, that kind of thing. So let's see what I can do. So I happened to find some white foam core board, and I think if I bring this out to five and a half inches, I should be able to have a good distance between the back wall and the sidewalk. So we'll see how this all goes. So right here I have this old foam core board. Unfortunately this big Monster Hobbies logo is stuck on there. This was the same one that was at the Sprung Buildings in the 2013 flood. But I think I can cut a bit off the top there and have the five and a half inches. So there in the back we've got that foam core sheet with a bit of a warp and spring in it. And unfortunately 
it wasn't long enough to go from one end to the other, so I had to cut this little square piece. So what I'll do is I'll glue that down with that uh, Elmer's glue all, which someone recommended. And I think I might even still cut this strip for the curb. So you get a little, little difference between the curb and the sidewalk there. So let's give it a shot. Now as our foam core board is drying on our display shelf, I went through and found my older model railroader magazines. And this one of course comes from when is October 11th, or sorry, October 2011. This one is How to Model Towns. Model Railroader is a great resource, even if you're doing 25th scale, because of all the different uh, ways people do towns and cities and their layouts. And I was noticing over here, there's a great article here on page 58 by V.S. Roseman, the uh, model builder, and uh, it's adding storefront details. So in this picture here, you can see these are the buildings as they come out of the box in HO scale, and there's nothing inside the windows. It looks pretty vacant as a street. However, Mr. Roseman has uh, added in all these great details inside just to fill out the stores. But one thing I noticed in these photographs is that his streets are brick, and the brick is going like straight out from the street this way, long ways. Uh, I'll just turn a page in here. Let's uh, zoom in on this photo here. See, I, I'm not too sure how well this turns out on my camera, but I anyway can clearly see that the bricks are coming out of the street this way. So instead of just having that flat styrofoam and painting it gray, which I was going to actually do in the first place, taking a look at this makes it more interesting. So let's go and see what kind of interesting stuff I've found in my own collection here that you can also get. So to help you build model kits, a nice company named Plastruck makes all these vacuum formed sheets in different styles. And I had bought these a long time ago to build some Games Workshop models for, of course, Warhammer displays and tabletop gaming terrain. However, I noticed that a lot of these are G-scale. These are all made for model railroads. G-scale is 124th scale, so again, this could be used on our diorama. Now, uh, getting back to those brick street uh, cobblestone kind of things, or whatever you want to call it, I have this nice sheet here. And although this looks chunky on this side, if you turn it over, you actually have the nicely engraved bricks. So again, I can cut these and lay them out on that display to make it look like a nice road. And in case you need the number for that, it is Plastruck 91624 comes in these nice sheets. Another great one I've got here is Stucco. This again is for all scales. And as you can see, it has a texture. Here, let's get it out of the bag. I have used this in the past, so this sheet's kind of cut down. But there, you can, you can see it's got the nice texture on there. Um, this, of course, is a vacuform side. You can always tell the side which is, you know, the vacuform bit as it does have uh, less detail on it, or the detail sort of looks wrong. So remember which side goes where. The stucco is Plastruck number 91573. Let's see, I don't know, 91573. I am trying to get these for the hobby shop. Actually, I'm a little disappointed because I did order these textured sheets specifically for that for Monster Hobbies. However, I ended up with the standard flat <laughs> stuff. This one is clapboard siding, so this is great for your buildings. It looks like the thin boards nailed on top of each other, much like how they built houses in the 20s, 30s, and 40s, and later. The number there is 91551. This is 1 8 inch clapboard siding. Uh, not quite too sure of the scale on that one, however, doesn't matter. These are cool if you're going to build a 50s type scene. This is patio stone, and if you can see, see how it's got like a big one and then little bits and all the rest. It's sort of like the slate floors and whatnot that they used back in the 50s. This again is G-Skill and 24th. 
Its number is 91593. And again, I'll see if I can order these in the future. This one is really cool. I'm going to use it on the sidewalk. This, of course, is these interlocking bricks, which are really nice. That's going to look really cool. This, again, is 24 scale G. G scale interlocking pavement. Or paving. Pardon me. It number is 91672. Very nicely done. This is cool if you're going to build a truck model. It's not really meant for buildings. This, of course, is G scale diamond plate. So that, again, you can use on the back of trucks, sides of fire engines, whatever. Its number is 91682. So again, cool stuff. Now, unfortunately, I don't know what happened to the bags, but getting into our buildings here, this is roofing tile. And it even has the little uh, wrinkle here. So you could cut this off the top, and then you get another one of these sheets and slip it under the roll, as it were. So you'd have your roof, you know, that way, nicely trimmed up. Again, very cool detail stuff, and easy to glue on. They give you uh, instructions on how to do it. And the last one I have that's loose, I'm not sure if this is 48 scale or what it is, but as you can see, it is our brick texture. So again, you can easily build up a you know, building back, and then glue these on. You can make it out of styrene. You could use a foam core and use some other types of, uh, of like a silicone-based glue or something like that. Something that's not going to melt the plastic. However, it is going to adhere it. You could even use, uh, oh, what's that stuff called? The um, two-part epoxy, I guess, or uh, the sticky glue, any of that kind of stuff. So, again, great detail. This saves you a lot of time and work because all you really need to do is just cut these to shape and glue them on. You don't have to sit there trying to scribe each individual brick or whatever you want to do. So again, these will look nice on our shelf display. All right, pardon me for the darkness and the shadows and everything that's happening right now, but I just want to show you that these are model power buildings that I have in HO scale. Yeah, again, sorry for the shaky camera. <laughs> Uh, but what I wanted to show is just how these all look so that you guys get an idea of uh, what to do for your kind of city and town. This building here is actually a Kibri model out of Europe, but it was a nice little corner building that sort of fits in, even though it does stick out a little more. The sidewalk's a bit shorter. However, there's stuff like George's Groceries, Nick's Pickles, Baldy's Barbershop, and Annie's Antiques, which are all model power buildings. I even have uh, this one over here that goes on fire with the flicker lights and the little apartment building right beside it. So again, sorry for the shadow. Actually, maybe if I do this. There we go. That kind of eliminated it. We're still in the dark a bit. As you can see, Annie's Antiques is tilted forward a bit at the top, but it's not because of, uh, you know, bad model construction. You can actually take the top portions of the buildings and lift them off, because these are all lighted inside, so if you need to replace that bulb, you just pull the building tops off and replace it. However, I think these are the sort of the correct dimensions that I want to use for our uh, display on the shelf models. Here we have our styrofoam shelf display model, and in order to glue that foam core board down and get it nice and flat and level, I've used this piece of uh, plywood. It's an offcut. Of course, you see I've painted it with in the past or whatever, it doesn't matter. The idea is to put the weight on it and have the pressure come out on each of the ends. And in order to keep nice weight on it, I've used this chunk of metal. This is actually from my old body working days when I was a body man for real cars, of course. This is the dolly you use, and you get your hammer, you have your sheet metal on the car, and you hit the dolly and move it around, of course, to sculpt your metal. But it is a nice, nice heavy piece. Basically looks like the heel of a shoe. And again, by pressing, this, putting that on there, you get the pressure down. So with this now out of the way, 
you can see our little sidewalk starting to take shape. Now, if you remember, I did a, a video on sizing up uh, buildings for 125th scale using HO buildings. And this big chunk of styrofoam here was, of course, one of the building fronts. You can see the top on it. Uh, there is a problem, though, of course, as you can see, is that uh, this is only 7 inches high, and the building, of course, is, I think, 12, something like that. Uh, here's one of the HO skill buildings that I was showing from the layout. And now, if this was actually for an HO display, this would be perfect. But what I'm going to need to do is size up this, scale it up, so that it's sort of this height, and then cut it off along the tops. So I'm not going to show you how to scale this up because I already did the video before. So I'll just leave a link up in here. Actually, there we go. It should scroll across the top of the screen. And I'll get started onto this. So I've cleared all the buildings out of our shelf display just to show you something interesting here. And as you can see, we've got our foam core down because that was glued in. Uh, what I wanted to show you was how this might look with the plaster components going in. So there's our interlocking brick sidewalk, which would be able to go this way. Luckily, you get two sheets in each pack. And then here's our brick, which, according to the model railroader, is coming out this way, with the bricks going long out. So I would have to get this up close to that sidewalk, and then cut it, or, well, measure it, of course, and then cut it, and then put the next sheet there, cut it, and the next one there. So possibly there'd be three cuts on this long one and two on our interlocking bricks. And then I would use some kind of nice adhesive to glue this down so that these will stay in place. Now the one thing that's nice about doing that is that these walls are all taped on. So I could actually remove the tape, pull these back walls out, just so I can get in and glue this, cut it and glue our bricks right up to the edge here uh, without having to think of too much serious complicated uh, construction methods. So again, very nicely done. A good way to uh, get this together. So to begin with, I started by cutting the interlocking brick sheet from Plastruct into the right width for our white sidewalk here. And I know I went right to the edge. Usually uh, People will build their buildings out here and then cut this to that size, but I'm thinking maybe I'm going to try to make my buildings using sheet styrene from Evergreen as well as the Plastruct outer bits. And this just will give it a lot of plastic to be able to glue the building onto using a tester's cement. Now, one thing as you notice, this side here is longer. And there is another little bit too. That is, if I butt the two sheets together, the interlocking bricks look all weird right along the seam here. So what I want to do is try to overlap a little until they seem to line up, like in comparison with the rest of the bricks. And then I'm going to take my hobby knife and just... Actually, first I'm going to take my Sharpie and make a line down here so I know where I'm cutting. And then I'll take this off and with the steel edge ruler I can use that as a guide to cut through a couple of passes and then it should go through. This is pretty thin stuff. And then after that's together, I'm going to have to figure out where this piece lines up to cut off the excess over here. And then it should all match together and look like one continual sheet of interlocking bricks all the way up that sidewalk. So what I've done here is I've cut all the uh, interlocking bricks so that they'll fit together and so that it comes off to that edge. And I've coated the white form board with our Elmer's glue all. I'm gonna to try to tack this down onto it, see how it goes. And if it doesn't glue, I'm gonna try the LePage No More Nails. But I haven't opened this yet, so <laughs> I'm hoping I won't need to. Okay, so I've got the glue down. And we'll just line this board up. So far, so good. And I can feel it to the edge of our uh, white foam board. Okay, so what I'll do is get that 
uh, <clears throat> plywood board back down here. Try to get rid of some excess in there. Get that plywood board and my steel dolly and lay it across and then put the weight on it, go for lunch and come back and see what happened. All right, but so far this side seems to be locked in place. Oops, I'm getting glue all over it. <laughs> okay, so that's a good sign that that's working. Anyway, that's what I'll do and uh, we'll carry on. You're watching the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage with your host, Trevor Selescu, owner of Monster Hobbies Online. That's me! So after a little bit of time, it looks like the glue all might actually work. Although I did lift it up and it's still a little gummy under here at this point in time. I'm hoping when it dries it'll be okay. Now one thing that I wanted to do before I cut that brick in here is to cap off the sidewalk just so it looks a bit nicer. And I did try to cut some styrofoam strip and I kind of ended up with this, but as you can see it's really wide. And the other problem with it, like I got it to the right height, but the other part of it is that it snapped in half because there's the other bit of it. You know, so that's not really what I want. So then I was looking through my evergreen styrene and I found this. This is 199, it's square, 0.250 by 0 0.250, so perfect one quarter scale. Now the, the good part and bad part about this is this is from the High River Flood and as you can tell there's some of that old flood mud underneath. Uh, the bad part is I was selling this and I can't sell the product anymore but the good part is I have a huge tub full of all these different shapes and sizes I managed to rescue. So I got two packs of those. I think I only need one. And what I'll do here is take my hobby knife. Just gonna cut a small corner off. Just like that. Just enough to allow us to bend that back and slip one of these out. Now I'm gonna have to wash it of course because we have got a bit of dirt and junk on there. But this actually is Oh, there we go. This is the right size to actually flush up with the sidewalk. So, in that foam core board. So that's going to be really nice in there. I can even take sandpaper and just gently go across the one edge just to round it over like a proper curb. And then I can take another one of these just like I did on that sidewalk there and go on this side. Now I'm going to have to recut this, uh, square that edge off, just so they'll go together nicely. But anyway, there's our sidewalk. Now the other thing is to figure out how long these are, and then uh, make a little score line in here so that you've got the breaks, just like it would be on a real city street, because there's no way they can extrusion this all the way straight across. And the other reason why they put the little cracks in here is if the ground shifts in real life, uh, it'll crack on the splits. I found that out. <laughs> um, not the hard way. I just found it out through... Uh, they were laying a street down and I asked somebody about it and that's what they said. So a little bit of interest there. Uh, now those bricks I could actually leave off and paint this area gray. And, um, you know, just sort of flex some dirt on it and that sort of thing. And it would look right. But, you know, there's nothing better than that brick texture. All these cool textures in here. Like, this is going to look great once it's painted and weathered. And, and I love it. <laughs> so anyway, what I'll do is um, clean these up and then cut it. And because this is also styrene, I should be able to glue it in. Although I'm gluing it to styrofoam. I don't know. I'll try the uh, tester's glue all again. Just see how it all works. Or I could actually... Actually, the better way to do this is to cut the brick. I was thinking I could, you know, save a, a little bit here. But if I glue the brick right up to the sidewalk edge, and then glue this on top of the brick with um, testers, this will glue to the styrene brick. And I won't really have to try to figure out how to glue it to styrofoam. So I think that'll end up being better. 
Boy, this is going to look really nice once it's all done. And here we have our G-Gage cement block sheets. And one thing I noticed about them is they are identical, which means that when you line these up, if you're going side by side, you notice that the uh, cement blocks change position like a brick wall. So you got one at 50% of two and so on. But the problem here is that when we get to the seam line, the two bricks are on top of each other. So in order to fix that, what we will need to do is cut one of these off down there so that it will overlap and be correct in that same brick over brick pattern like it is now. Uh, the other thing I noticed is that these sheets are pretty rough. So we do have a bit of a ridge right along here. So again, I'm going to have to uh, take my steel ruler and my hobby blade and cut this off so it's nice and square as well as square up the edges on these sides because again there are little ridges and lips and whatnot going on. So that's what I'll need to do before I can cut them this way along these lines for our uh, city scene. So now I've cut these sheets down a little bit and I actually noticed that you need to cut two strips off of the uh, stones here because it was fine when you cut one strip off and then you get the alternating tile effect here but then when you switched over to the other side you still had them line up the same. So again you're gonna have to cut one of these down but save these pieces because you never know where they might come in handy. You might be able to use them around the base of a building or something like that. So nothing is really junked here it's just put off to the side in a bag for another hundred years. Anyway, these should now butt up pretty nice together. So what I'll need to do is measure them against our styrofoam and then mark a line here with our Sharpie and cut them that way so that I'll have a few of these to go down the street. So after cutting the concrete block sheet and laying it all out, I've got that gluing onto our styrofoam. In the meantime, I want to make the curb so here's our plastic uh, rod there, the 250 by 250. And first thing, I've got a miter box here, which is uh, from Exacto, I believe, as well as the Exacto saw. I don't have the handle on it because I bent mine, <laughs> but I can still <laughs> use this, you know, nice and slow in here. Uh, so basically, what you want to do with this is. I've got a problem with mine leaning over, but you should be able to saw straight through and cut perfectly all the way down. I find that I have to saw a little bit and then turn this a little, saw it again, turn it a little, saw it again, and saw it again just so it comes down perfectly square. You know, you could also cut it this way and get 45 degree angles in, but I don't need to do that for this application. Anyway, what I've done is this is just the stock strip that I've got here. And uh, this is the curb. Now, I don't think you can see the the brakes in here too well. But uh, maybe if I just hold it. Oh, I've got one here, one here, one there, and all the way down. Uh, what I did was I went from one edge and I measured 55 millimeters and then made a saw cut and a saw cut just on the two sides don't need to do the the uh, other two sides I guess and this one and this one and that one and that one and all the way down there's a little bit of a uh, texture on here from the extrusion this is all extrusion made so that means there's hot plastic on one end and they just push it through a thing and then it comes out as a square now um, this little short end is going to go to the edge of the sidewalk uh, toward the edge of our styrofoam wall just so it looks like it's you know gives a suggestion of it being the same length as these only it's gone off screen as it were because this is sort of like a movie the next the other uh, rod here that i'm going to cut i'm going to measure out 55 millimeters from this end from the crack and come out this way 55 55 
until this one gets cut for the length of the styrofoam. Um, what else can I tell you on this? Oh, also, you want to round the edge here just with your sandpaper a little bit, just so it's not dead sharp like it is here. But you don't really need to round the edge on the top because that's going to come off the sidewalk. So that's how I did the sidewalk rods and I'll glue them down to the, our board and you can see what the finished product looks like coming up next. So here we have that shortened piece of sidewalk trim just to finish off our sidewalk display. One thing I wanted to show you was after we make the cuts with the saw you'll notice that the lines are kind of rough and they're very thin. So what I'm using here is our number 16 hobby blade and you could also use a little file if you have one but I'm trying to get that point right down here where the line is. I want to scrape sort of this way first and then turn this and scrape this way at that uh, nice little angle, right? So what this will do is it'll make that curb look a little more rounded out. And then once I get that perfected up a little, I just want one edge of this and I'm going to take my sand plate paper. Now this is 180 on a sticky back on a piece of MDF uh, fiberboard, I guess it's called. It's sort of wood, you know. <laughs> so then what I want to do is just round this on the one edge. I'm just going to do that light for now because I want to scribe the rest. Actually, the way to do it is to go down this way with it and just round the edge a little bit so it doesn't look so like a piece of industrial steel. It looks more like the proper shape that it should be. So basically that's it. And then I'm going to use my red testers glue on one of the smooth sides here. Since my sidewalk is on the bottom and not on this side, I'm just going to put a bead, you know, like down there. And then I'm able to put it on the sidewalk and hold it in place. Now one thing about the sidewalk is that the uh, uh, interlocking bricks are sitting on the foam core board and they're kind of uneven and coming off. So I took my sandpaper because it's smooth on the one side, it's not going to scratch the sidewalk. And I basically, let's pretend this is that sheet, I went down the sidewalk this way in line with that, um, the board, sorry, the interlocking brick pattern. Oh, like this. Okay, there's the brick pattern. So I just went down the board, you know, perfectly like that, just to perfect any wobbles in here with the sandpaper and cut them out, or sand them off, so that when the sidewalk goes on, it's not like bending and twisting. It's nice and straight as it should be. So that's what you want to do, and we'll go and take a look at it in a minute. And here we have our street scene all completed. Well, maybe not all completed, but we've got our roadways in and our curb, as well as our interlocking bricks up here. So just as a test run, we can put some figures down. But uh, in that illustration or picture, there was a grade in here. I decided not to add that in because I was out walking around in my neighborhood and I noticed that uh, a lot of those storm drains are spaced very far apart in the real world. So not to have one is not much of a big deal. But let's put some things down and see how this is shaping up. So now we've added in some cars into our street scene. I've got an AMT 58 Chevy here that I built when I was a kid, as well as the AMT 53 Ford. These are 125th scale, of course. And in the background, I've added in some people. These are 3D figures made by my friend Wit. He's got a 3D printer. And uh, I can leave his, or his link down in the description below. And these figures here sitting on this bench, this is the bench from the Beverly Hillbillies car, another AMT kit. And as you can see, we've got our interlocking bricks, our curb here, and our uh, stone bricks or blocks, whatever they were called. <laughs> and again, you can sort of get an idea of what the scene's going to look like. But now we need the buildings in the background, and that would be our next step. 
as well as painting the scene so it doesn't look, you know, like all plastic, and painting all these figures. Now, the figures I might do in a video coming up, make it its own series, but uh, this will give you guys a bit of an idea of what's going on. And one of the things I'm thinking of doing for the background buildings here is basing them around sort of 1910 or maybe even 1900 style buildings. And that way you can use them sort of going from anywhere from 1900. So I could put in uh, old model T's and stuff in here or um, go make it basically go up into the 1950s so that the buildings in the background would still be relatively the same. Although some of the features in here might just be a drop in like a, a 50s vending machine or that sort of thing. But the people will be glued in so that they'll sort of represent a, a frame of time, you know, more or less is something that's relatively universal. These figures are sort of from the thirties, I do believe. And, uh, but then that way when, because the whole idea of this display is that when new models come out, I can put in ones that are there. And then on the shelf above, I can have those models for sale in the boxes. You know, that sort of thing. So it gives somebody a bit of an imagination of what they could do. So by making those buildings in the back cover a span of about 50 or 60 years, then that way anything that I put in the foreground will still relatively blend in with what's going on. Uh, I can build another one of these scenes that sort of goes from 1960 and forward, maybe 1970, so that I can put in cars from the 80s, 90s, that sort of thing, have people in the background from the 70s, that uh, whatever, so that it all ends up looking nice. So I happened to find this nice little HO scale building, and as you can see, it's a vintage type storefront. Very tall building, actually. And, uh, what I want to do is use a bunch of these measurements and scale them to make my own building for this 24th scale layout. And now one thing of note is the height of these doors. There's a uh, engineer figure that I have for this railroad and as you can see his head is about 50% <coughs> up that door. So uh, you can tell this is quite a tall building for uh, what's going on there in the storefront. However, this measurement here, going from here to here, the 2 inch, when we multiply that by 87 to get it from HO scale into what this building would be like in the real world, and then we divide it into R scale, 24th scale, we get a total height of 7 and a quarter inches, which equals the same height from our um, interlocking bricks to the top of the styrofoam. So that means that from here to here will fit perfectly in the shelf and on our layout it should look about right. So here I've measured up the basic measurements for this building and I decided to do a few different types of things so that it will look okay on our street scene. One thing is to take this sign up here or the, the top of the building and move it down as if it were here. So that's what this line from here to here is. This and this are of course our little brick here and here. This is just a rough mock-up here. Uh, although the door is sunken in, you know, like that, I decided to just do this flat for now. Just, uh, this could be building one, building two, or something down the street. This is just for the basics. So what I did is I went in, instead of trying to figure out here to here, I went from he, this edge all the way to the edge of the door here and got a measurement. And then of course measured the kickboards and all the rest just to give us this basic thing. Uh, now if you're wondering how this measures up, here's our um, 125th scale person. Whoops. And again, as you can see, his head is about halfway up that door. So can, can you imagine these doors? Like if this guy is six foot, that's almost like a 12 foot door. <laughs> so it is quite a tall building, but you know, everything should line up according to this basic height. 
So there we go again, right? Perfectly in scale. So what I'm thinking of doing with this is, I don't know if you have ever built a balsa wood model airplane. The concept here is to take this piece of paper and pin it down onto a sheet of cork board or styrofoam. And then you get a bunch of little sewing pins and you pin the, f or thumbtacks, tack down the four corners. And then you get sewing pins and you will um, use those to hold down any pieces in here. So what we would do is, oh, uh, get a piece of saran wrap. Okay, so peg this onto your board. Get a piece of saran wrap and peg that over the top. Then that way you're not gluing right onto the paper because you don't want to do that. You want to release this afterwards. So what I'll do is I will cut um, evergreen sheet styrene and the strips and all that stuff. And I will use these lines as a basis. So if I've got one strip here like this, let's pretend that's evergreen. I'm going to glue that strip like that uh, and then you know before I glue it of course I'm going to cut this right chop it off there sort of thing glue this to shape go all the way around like that just like you're doing with the model airplane so and then once all the glue is dry in here I can lift this thing up like a big frame and then uh, lift it off that cellophane and then be able to have this again for later use. So I could actually make the two buildings using this template here and just design up the edges and the corners and all that stuff differently using different uh, bits of styrene from our surplus. Now another thing I have in my collection of bits and pieces lying around in the house here are these vacuum formed windows and doors and these are in G gauge Garden Railroad which again would be 124 scale and I don't really know who made these or uh, I know I got them in some kind of trade with the model kits at the store but again I've had these for over a decade maybe well like 15 16 years and I really don't know where they, who made these or what they're from, but I know I have them. <laughs> so the idea here is you would uh, cut these windows open bit by bit and then glue plastic, clear plastic in behind, just so it looks like uh, glass and everything. You cut these off here in the little, you know, lines or whatever, and then you would cut that into your building face. And, uh, what I have here is some of that foam core board and uh, you'll notice that the foam core board is the right thickness. I'm not, I can't tilt this up. Oh, there we go. It's the right thickness for these uh, frames of the doors and whatnot. So there's two ways of doing it. I can do it like I showed before with that model airplane idea. Or I could just get a sheet of this foam and kind of mark out where it's all supposed to go and then start slicing with my hobby knife. Um, what you'll notice here is the height of the door is more realistic to a person. That's your you know, typical like six, seven foot door. I was debating to use these for the store like on our street, but the problem is these windows are, uh, this would be more like on a house. You know, you don't need the great big wide windows to display product and all the rest. These are really narrow, right? So again, not, not the best. And then I'd have to figure out how to cut them all and sink them in and all the rest. And some of these have these interesting little ribs down here and whatnot. They're not ribs, but moldings, you know, and to get that to precisely fit, it's, uh, well, there's a trick to it, and I'm feeling lazy. <laughs> uh, I'll save these for another project later on. I also have these two doors that are like double kind of old school garage doors. But again, I mean, 
Yeah, and then the other thing is I can't really say, yeah, go out and buy these and do the same, because I don't even know who made this. So <laughs> there you go. It's sort of like a, a bonus for me. Well, I hope you enjoyed part one of our 125th scale street scene diorama. Should be cool if I can ever get this thing finished. <laughs> but we'll see. So tune in next time. I don't know when that's going to be, but part two will be coming sometime in the future. Future. Woo! Should be good. Well, until next time, everyone, happy model building. Keep building that stuff. And even if you take like forever to finish anything like I do, it'll be worth it in the end. See ya.